Okay, so here's another common type of optimization problem that you see in a calculus course, um, trying to build the best possible box, right? Um, and again, we, we stick with rectangular boxes because everyone knows that the volume of a box is simply length times width times height, right? We, we feel like we're allowed to assume you know this. Um, sometimes we might do like a cylindrical can, some, maybe we throw a cone at you or something like that, but you know, boxes are pretty safe. So when you want to set these up, right, you go through sort of your checklist, you got to identify quantities involved, well, length, width, and height, sure, okay. Um, but we throw a little bit of a twist on this one, right? Uh, we're not just trying to minimize, let's say, the, the area, right? Um, we switch things up so that there are weights involved, right? We're trying to minimize not area, but cost. And the cost per area depends on whether you're building the sides or the bottom, right? So this is gonna throw things off, right? Um, and we don't put a lid, right? Um, if, if all I gave you was, I said, build a box with a given volume that has the minimum area, well, you make a cube, right? So we wanna come up with problems where the answer is not gonna be a cube. So we throw in these things to kind of break the symmetry, make the problem a little bit more interesting. All right, so minimize the cost. Well, let's give ourselves a little picture of a box. So we have some idea of, of what's going on here, okay? All right, so here's my box. Okay, looks like a box. So we've got length, width, and height, but we don't want to have all these variables involved, right? So what do we know about the box? We know that the length has to be twice the width. So if this is x, then this side must be 2x. The remaining side, the height, Right, let's call it y, All right? Okay, so the volume, length times width times height, has to be equal to 10, right? So it turns out the volume here is actually, this is our constraint, right? That's a constraint. Okay, so 10 has to equal 2x times x times y. So 2x squared y, okay. Um, what is, what are we actually trying to optimize here? Uh, ah, here it is. Minimize cost. Okay. So let's say C for cost. And what are we, what are we trying to minimize? Okay. So, uh, we've got these two prices here, right? So let's deal with the bottom first. So material for the bottom costs $10 per meter squared. What's the area of the bottom? Well, the bottom has length 2x with x, right? So we have 2x times x times 10, right? So this is the area of the bottom. There's only one bottom, okay? Now, Sides cost $6 per square meter. Um, but, oh, there's two different kinds of sides, right? Um, so there are these two sides, this one and this one, which have area x times y. So there are two of those of area x, y. And there are another two that have an area of 2x times y. Right? The front and the back, 2x times y. Okay, so let's, let's clean this up. We have a cost of 20x squared, um, 12xy, 2 times 2 times 6 is 24. So 24 plus 12, 36x times y, right? But now we can come up to here and we can solve for either x or y in the constraint equation, but y is easier to solve for. So we might as well solve for y, right? Plus there's only one place we have to get rid of it in the cost function, 
Um, so we say, okay, divide by 2x squared, y is 5 over x squared. Good. So y is 5 over x squared, we plug that in. So cost as a function of x is going to be 20x squared plus 36x times 5 over x squared, which is... 20x squared plus, so 5 times 36 is 180 over x. Okay, so that's a lot of work, and so far all we've got is our cost function, right? It took us five minutes just to get the cost function. But we've got it. So now we want to minimize costs. How do we minimize? Well, we should be looking for critical numbers, right? We're looking for a relative minimum should happen when the derivative is zero. Um, Again, we should put a little bit of thought into domain before we proceed. Um, what, what are the possible values for x here, right? The dimensions. What are the restrictions on the dimensions? Well, um, the constraint here is, is only that, that x squared times y times 2 should give you 10, right? Um, of course, x and y have to be positive. They're lengths, right? Um, but x, in principle, could get as close to 0 as we want, right? I can, I can get x close to 0. y is just going to have to be really big to compensate. Um, but we can see, either looking here, right? If y is really big here, that's going to give you a big cost. Um, but we'll see here. If x gets close to 0, right, this quantity is going to blow up, right? So we're not going to minimize cost by making x really small. Um, we're also not going to minimize cost by making x really big. Okay, so x here in principle, right, really x can be anywhere from 0 to infinity. But we look at sort of these limiting values. The limiting values are infinite. So if there is a minimum, it's going to have to happen at a critical number. Okay, I think we have just enough room to do this. Let's see. C prime is going to be... 40x minus 180 over x squared, right? Derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Um, and we want to have a common denominator here. So we're going to multiply this one top and bottom by x squared. So we have um, 40x cubed minus 180 over x squared. And so c prime equals 0 when 40x cubed equals 180, OK? Uh, or x is going to be the cube root of, well, I guess 18 over 4, 9 over 2. Um, not a particularly convenient dimension, but we can work with it, right? So x is going to be cube root of 9 over 2. Now, I've run out of board, but I haven't quite answered the question. So we'll just sort of say things out loud. Um, the question was asking us to find the dimensions that minimize cost. So there are a couple of things I should do. One, is that actually a minimum? Well, let's see. Uh, the derivative is going to be negative to the left, positive to the right, so yes. It's a minimum. Good. We sort of knew that was going to have to happen just by looking at sort of the limiting values. Um, the other thing is, is I really should take that and say, okay, the dimensions are going to be um, that value, cube root of 9 over 2, by 2 times the cube root of 9 over 2, by, well, we have to solve for y, so, right? so I have to take this, come back up to here, plug it in, get the value for y so I can list those dimensions, right? And then I'd be done. Um, so the numbers weren't pretty, but we managed to solve the problem, right? 